happened again, Ravens fans. It happened again to where the Baltimore Ravens, right at the trade deadline, they made an offer and they had another deal that almost went through. But one, they got outbid and for the other deal, it fell through at the last second. Team, keep it clean. We got to talk about it. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn the notifications on, and leave a like on the video. My goodness, I looked at yesterday's video. I said, whoa, team, keep it clean. Y'all really coming through with the likes. I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for everything that y'all do. Seriously, I love y'all a lot. Let's get into it, even though I don't. I know you don't want to hear this, but we got to let you know either way. So, Baltimore Ravens heading into this trade deadline. We had all these different eyes on these different toys that we wanted to upgrade the Baltimore Ravens with, mainly on defense, but there was some on offense as well. We were looking, looking at some potential offensive linemen and whatnot. We're like, okay, if they don't do nothing on offense, all right, it is what it is. But a week before the trade deadline, they actually did do something on offense because they traded for wide receiver Deontay Johnson, and they basically got him for pretty much nothing. So good job, Baltimore Ravens, on that move. I loved it. Now, what are we going to do on defense, though? So heading into the trade deadline, we were like, okay, how can we upgrade this team? Well, we could upgrade the secondary for sure. A lot of Ravens fans were looking at corners and safeties. But something that helps those corners and safeties out even more is a good pass rush. So we were looking at some defensive ends, some defensive linemen that could help potentially upgrade this Baltimore Ravens defense as a whole. There was talk about Zadarius Smith, even though it was highly unlikely that the Browns would do an in-division trade uh, with the Baltimore Ravens. There was the, the dreams of a Miles Garrett, a Max Crosby, uh, even a, a, a Jeffrey Simmons. I think that would be a dream, too. But the Titans said, nope, we are not giving him away. Uh, and then there were some other guys as well, like a Jadavian Clowney. We thought about that. Uh, but nothing ended up happening. And then we thought about with the secondary, like, oh, man, okay. Marlon Humphrey, good. Nate Wiggins, he's a rookie, but he's been, he been, uh, he been pretty good overall. Um, then you got Brandon Stevens. He's been struggling this year. He's he certainly been struggling a lot this year. Teams have really been targeting him a lot. They've been picking on him. So could the Baltimore Ravens upgrade that cornerback spot? And then... We looked at Marcus Williams thinking, oh, man, the Ravens, they could use another good safety because obviously they got Kyle Hamilton uh, or Darius Washington. He can literally play everywhere and do everything. So shout out to him. But Marcus Williams and Eddie Jackson, they have both been struggling big time this year. So those are the main spots that the Baltimore Ravens fans were looking at. Defensive line slash pass rush uh, and in the secondary cornerback and safety. So the trade deadline, it came and went and the Baltimore Ravens, they did get a cornerback, but it wasn't who a lot of people were expecting or hoping for because they traded for Tredavious White. Now, again, we do hope that Tredavious White, it works out, or uh, whatever the Baltimore Ravens plans are with him. We hope that he goes off. We hope that he does his thing. We hope that he excels with the Baltimore Ravens. And it was even said that Tredavious White, he waived all of his um his in-game, his, his per-game bonuses. So it's like he was really like ready to leave and get a fresh start. So that, that says a lot to me, man. That's like he was like, Rams, get me out of here. Whatever I got to do to get off this team, let, let me go. So... Shout out to him. So, I, again, I really hope it does work out with him and for him uh, in Baltimore. But with there were some trades that didn't go through <laughs> for the Baltimore Ravens that they certainly attempted. The first one, the biggest one, in my opinion, um, they offered. And, and this came out right after the Bengals game, right after we beat the Bengals in that stressful, crazy, dramatic game. Albert Breer. He tried to go and ruin it for us. He tried to kill the vibe for us. Because it's like, man, we coming off of this big division win. We got a 10-day break. Ravens sitting at 7-3. and three, And here comes Albert. He said, oh, hey, Ravens fans, y'all won? You on your high horse right now? Well, let me bring it, you back down to reality. Ravens tried to trade for Marshawn Lattimore, but they got outbid. And I said, oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. And now I do shout out to EDC because I love the fact that he tried. But, again, he got outbid. I believe the commanders, what they offered for him was a third rounder and I believe a third and fourth and a six or a third or fifth and a six. I think it's a third or fourth and a six. But they offered more than what the Baltimore Ravens did because, again, they Ravens got outbid. And it's like Ravens got the advantage, too, because he's not in the conference. He's not in that conference. So that would make that that usually makes it a little more enticing for teams to trade a player away when they trade him to a team that's not in their conference but the saints like look we ain't doing nothing this year ain't nothing happening this year we, we ain't got to worry about seeing the commanders and if we even if we do it is what it is so bye so with Marshawn Lattimore man just thinking about if he could have been a Baltimore Raven and then that, that's what makes these things hurt even more because you envision them being on your team 
And in our case, them being with the Baltimore Ravens. And I remember the, on the on trade deadline day, before the trade deadline, it was a report that came out that said the Ravens were in the mix for Marshawn Lattimore. And I know there were some Ravens fans that were like, oh, they're just trying to use our name to try to boost up his stock or whatever. This always happens. But obviously from this report from our beard, the Ravens were really in the mix. They like were really trying to get Marshawn Lattimore. I just wish they would have offered more. I, I, I wish they would have offered more to really try to seal the deal um but i do respect them for trying i just hate having to hear these stories afterwards about oh we tried but we failed but with this try this lets us know that the baltimore ravens know that cornerback is an issue for them they know that the cornerback the secondary is it, a big problem for them and they try to address it they try to really upgrade it and, and i love that because they didn't just try to do a trade for a cornerback and like all right we tried to we, we traded for a corner there you go ravens fans no, they really tried to significantly upgrade their secondary because think about this. Even if he would have just got traded on Tuesday and then played in the game on Thursday, that game against the Bengals would have been way less stressful had that been Marshawn Lattimore in Brandon Stevens' spot. Oh, my God. It would have been way less of a stressful game, in my opinion. But having him on a team, it would have been like, who, who do you pick on? Who, who, who do you pick on if you're a quarterback? Marlon Humphrey? No. Marshawn Lattimore, no. I mean, you could try Nate Wiggins, but it's like if they could have had him in a secondary, oh man, it would oh that would have been a huge upgrade because that gives Ardarius Washington that much more freedom because you can move him around. Even Brandon Stevens, that would give him more freedom too because you could move him in different spots too. I mean, put him back at safety. Let him take Marcus Williams' spot. It can't hurt at this point. It really can't. But that would have just done so much for this football team. Just like that. That would have been an immediate upgrade to this past defense. But guess what? That wasn't the only trade that didn't go through. So that was a trade that the Baltimore Ravens attempted, but they got outbid. But there was another trade that they had everything in place. Everything was set up nice. And then they said it fell through at the last second. And that was for Miami Dolphins defensive lineman, former Baltimore Raven, former Jacksonville Jaguar, former Arizona Cardinal, Calais Campbell. <laughs> Now, while Calais Campbell, um, that wouldn't be a needle-moving trade in my opinion, but it would have gave you some really, really good depth, quality depth, and somebody who can obviously start, too, on this defensive line. Because we know Travis Jones, before he was dealing with an injury, we, still, we see the difference that it makes with him just being healthy again. All the difference in the world. And Namdi Matabike, like, oh, I got my guy Travis Jones back. Thank goodness. Now I can play some football. Now I can show these Ravens fans that I was not overpaid. Because a lot of them been talking about me that way. But anyway... Um, if they would have got Calais Campbell, that would have been excellent, excellent for depth. And again, somebody that could come in and start if need be, somebody you can move around on a defensive line, somebody that can block some field goals, we could use some more of those. But it, it just, it, it would have been great. But they said it fell through at the last second. And I said, my goodness, every single year we got to hear about stuff like this. Obviously, last year was one of the biggest blunders that happened because they said they had everything in place for Derrick Henry to be a Baltimore Raven last year at the trade deadline. Ravens had whatever they were going to send. Titans had whatever they were going to send. And everything was great. And then at the last second, they said the Titans said no, no. And it's like, man. I remember in previous years, they've been, it's been said the Ravens tried to trade for, like, Jamal Adams. They tried to trade for Xavier Howard. They tried to trade for, uh, jo oh, what's his name again, um, Jarvis Landry. Uh, and and there have been other players as well. So, as Ravens fans, we're so used to hearing these stories, but that don't make them hurt any less, especially this year when those guys could have definitely been big upgrades to this defense. So now we done got to my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. And if you would like to take part in it, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean Patriots. And if you would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Y'all can send it directly on Patreon. Let's get into this first question uh, from my guy, Will. And Will said, this is his first time sitting in a question. So, okay, Will, appreciate you. He said, um, he's been watching the channel for a while. He said he's a longtime viewer, so thank you for that. Uh, we all know that Bateman has some good and some bad games, but I don't think anyone remembers about Brad, Brad, oh, Brashaw Perryman and his countless drops and being a bust. Whoa, how are you going to talk about my guy like that? That's how, that's how you want to get the question started? Talking about my guy like that? Come on now. But anyway, he said, Bateman has been improving every year since we first drafted him. Keep up the excellent work and hope all is well. Appreciate you, Will. Um, I don't think anybody forgets about Rashad Perryman. Um, but uh, with Rashad Bateman, 
it's just it's the moments it, it, it's it's the moments because in the in your biggest moments you want your guys to step up you want your players to step up and in some biggest moments over the past couple of games he's been falling short like uh in the obviously the browns game the the, the sun game you're gonna call that for a shot baby the sun game big moment right there that's a game changing play perfect pass perfect throw Rashad Bateman in a perfect spot and he drops it so, oh man cuz he even had a drop before that but that second drop the sun drop it, it made us forget about that drop earlier well actually no it didn't and then the following game against the Broncos it wasn't a big play it could have been a big play it could have been a huge play um but Lamar he makes all these defenders miss and whatnot and then throws Rashad Bateman a pass or hit Rashad Bateman in stride and Rashad Bateman literally dropped it so, and then in this game against the Bengals, oh, the, the Ravens, they got the clock on their side. They, they right there uh, deep in the red zone. They uh, do a play action. We all thought, hey, why are they not running the ball? Bengals got to use timeouts, whatnot. Ravens try to catch him off guard. A play action, fake them out. Lamar hits Rashad Bateman, perfect pass. Rashad Bateman drops it. It was such a big moment. But, again, look at Lamar. Look at Monk, and I don't know whose call it was, but they li literally went right back to Rashad Bateman the very next play. I was very, very surprised about that, but I was happy that it ended up uh, working out. So with Rashad Bateman, um, it's just about m continuing to make the plays in the biggest moments. Next question came from my guy, Big George. He said, my guy, big salute to you. Great content and best wishes to you and the family. Been subscribed to your channel for a while now. Uh, you help with the info on the Ravens updates. Hey, appreciate that, George. Thank you, seriously, man. And thank you for watching, man. He said, my statement is, do you think Ed Reed and Ray Lewis could step in and talk to the coach and the defense? And did you see what Ed Reed's statement was on the interview he had about Thursday's game when he had the red vest and hat on? I, I didn't see it. I do remember a couple of weeks ago, though, I think, uh, where he talked about the Ravens defense. He said that they... I think he said they're not a championship defense or something like that. They like, they don't they not closing it out. I forgot exactly what he said, but he, whatever he said, it was true. But back to your first uh, question, where you talked about, do you think Air Reed and Ray Lewis could step in and talk to the coach and the defense? <laughs> you think Harbaugh gonna allow that? <laughs> well, actually, you know what? I take that back because was it last year or the year before last where he had a bunch of them like come in before a game um, with a bunch of like bunch of ravens like legends um they came to the facility and they were talking to the team and stuff and i guess ravens were really trying to up the atmosphere something like that um but a lot of them came and talked i know ray lewis was part of that i believe i think ed reed might have been too so yeah hey it's possible it's possible and i mean i'm sure those guys would have some really really good stuff to say because they kind of got some great experience under their belts. Two Hall of Famers, Super Bowl champions. They were, that's crazy to think about. Always think about this when you talk about Ray Lewis and A. Reid at the same time. The Baltimore Ravens literally had two of the best players at their positions ever. Ever. Ray Lewis was one of the best inside linebackers to ever play in the league. Air Reed was one of the best safeties to ever play in the league. The Baltimore Ravens had them at the same time for a long time. And they had a Terrell, so and they had a Lodi Nada. And like, oh my goodness, man. That's that's crazy. And to have been able to watch those guys play like live. And not even necessarily talking about in person, but getting to watch them play in red. Like same, the way we watch Ravens games now, but getting to watch them on the field together at the same time, that was a privilege. So, yeah, anything that they said to the Baltimore Ravens, to the team, to the defense, yeah, I, that would be great. And it, I, anything could help, especially that defense. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, he said, thanks, man. Big salute to you again. I really hope you land on TV with your content. I'm rooting for you. Hashtag Ravens Nation. Hashtag team. Keep it clean. Hey, appreciate it. Next question came from Tammy. She said, what are your thoughts on Brandon Stevens going back to his original position that he played at UCLA, which was running back? He didn't start playing cornerback until he went to SMU. Oh, I thought you were getting ready to say to back to his original position as a safety. The running back? No, no, we don't. We wouldn't need him there. We got Derrick Henry, Justice Hill, and just got Keaton Mitchell back. They still got Rasheen Allen. No, that would be a waste for him to go to running back. But if you're talking safety, let's talk. Unfair bias. Next question came from my guy Michael. He said, hello to the number one Ravens podcast in my eyes. Liar, liar. We ain't number one nothing. But no, I, I appreciate you though, Mike. He said, love your content. It's literally my fix every day. 
I hope you and the family are doing well and living your best lives. Appreciate that a lot, Mike. Thank you. He said, now on to my question. I would like to know why announcers such as Mad Dog, Mike Tannenbaum, Nick Wright, and others will always say that Lamar can't get past Mahomes. Yet, they prop up Joe Burrow, but somehow always fail to mention that Joe can't get past Lamar. I saw somebody bring this up on Twitter a couple days ago. Well, obviously, it was after the game. But I'm like, man, I never thought about that before. Never thought about that before. Obviously, the narrative is always, hey, Lamar can't beat Pat Mahomes. He can't get past Patrick Mahomes. He always loses to Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> hey, that's what it is right now. But with the Bengals, the, the Joe Burrow Bengals, they, they ain't been able to get past Lamar. They haven't. So it's like, man, that, but that never, ever gets talked about. Like, Ravens fans, they'll put it up all day, every day. They'll put the whole, first it was 5-1, and one, then it was 6-1, and one, then it was 7-1, then it was 8-1. I think it's 9 or 10, 9 or 10 and 1 right now. Whatever it is, it's a lot to a little. But that never gets, ever gets talked about. Such a great point. He said, it's weird, huh? Well, that's my thing. Sorry it took forever. Please keep up the content. Hashtag team, keep it clean for life. Appreciate you, Mike. John Harbaugh, hey, next question came from Adi Gianni. He said, over the past three, four years, there have been Ravens fans calling for the team to fire head coach John Harbaugh. I'm not from the U.S. and started following the game from 2020, and this is my team for life. Uh, I have always noticed the way other team fans talk about our culture and coaching, wishing their team would function like ours. We are the best drafting team in the league. Mm, uh, well, anyway, continue. He said, the best example is that Nate Wiggins looked like a future star last week. He was the only guy who did decent against Chase, uh, who was arguably playing his greatest game. If you can go head to head with games best on his best day as a rookie, you're going to be a star. Uh, hardball for me is all about motivation and creating the environment to win. The players love him. They want to play for him. The most talented offensive or defensive coordinators end up as awful head coaches as they can inspire their team. Next year, someone is going to sign Todd as a head coach probably, so we better win now. Wow. That, hey, that's my favorite part of your whole question so far. And we didn't even get to your question yet. Anyway, he said, but trust me, Hobbs and EDC are going to find a new talented coordinator and they're going to give him the reins. The personnel will continue to change, but the team always keeps competing. Now, before we continue, yeah, the Baltimore Ravens under John Harbaugh have been a very, very competitive team overall. They've had some years where it's been like, Ooh, what's that? But overall, they've been a very competitive team. Well, people's issue with John Harbaugh, people's problem with John Harbaugh is obviously 2012 was great. It was amazing. But um, then, uh, especially with Lamar Jackson, I think we, we could skip those years from what? 2013 and 14 was really good too and they came up short they end up having two 14 point leads in one game and lost to the Patriots oh my goodness that was so sad oh that game hurt but anyway um up uh with Lamar Jackson under those years they've been a great team um in the regular season but they just keep falling short in the playoffs uh and it's been because of the same issues because of them going against their identity. Now, a lot of Ravens fans look at that and say, hey, why do they keep doing the same thing under different offensive coordinators, under different personnel? But it's the same issue every, t every playoff game. Not every playoff game, but when they look, they, they go against their identity. And a lot of people also feel like John Harbaugh was not truly getting the best out of Lamar Jackson. I mean, right now he is. And look, shout out to John Harbaugh because this offseason, when John Harbaugh, like, We've heard John Harbaugh defend Lamar Jackson plenty of times. We've heard him speak highly of Lamar Jackson plenty of times. But it was in this offseason where I had never heard him speak so highly with so much passion uh, and just with so much love and just almost protection, too, um, but support at the same time of Lamar Jackson. Because John Harbaugh went on like a three and a half minute. I can't call it a rant, but he went on. He was just talking three and a half minutes just straight talking about Lamar Jackson, talking about people doubted him, talking about how the Baltimore Ravens want to make him the best quarterback ever, ever. And a lot of us, when, when we heard him say that, I appreciated it, but at the same time, I was thinking, like, it, it just reminded me of the past, past seasons ever since 2020. Because like I always say, I give them a pass. I, 2018 was his rookie year. Flacco was still the starter. 2019 was Lamar Jackson's first year starting. So I give him a pass for those two years. So I didn't expect him to go all in on Lamar those two years. But after Lamar showed you he won an MVP in 2019 with Hollywood, with Miles Boykin, with Seth Roberts, with Willie Sneed, from 2020 and moving forward, especially since he was on the third year of his rookie deal, you had absolutely no excuse to go all in on offense. You had zero. 
Less than zero excuse to go all in on offense, but you didn't. You failed Lamar Jackson. In 2020, you failed Lamar Jackson. In 2021, you failed. In 2022, you failed him. They kept failing Lamar Jackson offensively. Then the whole contract thing came up and whatnot. We know how ugly that got, but the Baltimore, they kept failing him. They were not doing everything in their power, whether it was with personnel, whether it was with coaching staff, because with Greg Roman, 2019, great. He's a great introductory offensive coordinator, but you can't keep him around for too long because stuff goes stale fast. The Baltimore Ravens, they kept him around for too long, and it was like they trusted Greg Roman more than they trusted Lamar Jackson. It's like they believed in Greg Roman more than they believed in Lamar Jackson. This Lamar Jackson that we're seeing right now, we should have been seeing this years ago. We should have been seeing this years ago. And the Ravens could actually still do an even better job of investing in him. But this starting last year was the best that they had done. And then it's been continuing this year. So they, they but this should have been old news. It shouldn't have been, oh, we're going to start doing it when Lamar's on his second contract. No, this should have been happening on his rookie contract starting in 2020. So that's why a lot of people have the issue with John Harbaugh. But I guess that would be. A bit of John Harbaugh, that would be someone on Eric DaCosta as well because he's the one that makes this team. But it's under John Harbaugh's vision. But anyway, back to your question. We, gonna, we got a little sidetrack. He said, I understand that not winning this year is going to be a bad look on Harbaugh. Whoa, 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 hold up. Whoa, 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 whoa. We winning this year. So I don't even want to hear you say that anymore, buddy. But anyway, continuing, he said, uh, I understand that not winning this year is going to be a bad look on Hobbs as this leads to questions as the narrative pops. He could keep us competitive, but can he get us over the hump? But as of today, I personally don't see a reason why any Ravens fan should want Hobbs gone. People imagine replacing him with a genius play caller would be ideal, but I don't think that's bona fide assurance. Nothing is assurance. Nothing. Ravens wouldn't know until they actually did it. And right now, should John Hobbs be fired right here, right now? No, no, of course not. Why would it? No. no. They sitting at seven and three. They got a nice little ten day break right now. They chilling right now. But no, he should not be fired at all right now. And he has earned the right to obviously complete this season. Um, but Ravens got no excuses for getting it done. They had no excuses last year for getting it done. They they don't got no excuses this year for finishing the job either. But this time they will. Um, something else that you you talked about uh, with people imagine replacing him with a genius play caller will be ideal. But I don't think that's a bona fide insurance, assurance. Excuse me. Um, if a, if think about this, like if he, a head coach gets fired, it's usually a team with a bunch of bad players. They're doing bad. They're doing poorly. They're underachieving. Da, da, da. If John Harbaugh were to get fired, whoever the head coach was, it would be so hard for him to fail. It would be extremely hard for whoever the head coach would be to fail, to not have success. His quarterback's Lamar Jackson. Yeah, boom. Uh, his quarterback's Lamar Jackson. He will still have a Zay Flowers. He will still have a Rashad Bateman. He will have a Kyle Hamilton. He would have, a, hopefully better than this year, Roquan Smith. He would have a Namdi Madabike. He would have Travis Jones. Like, and, and there are more players that we could talk about. Marlon Humphrey, Nate Wiggins. So, oh, Darius White. So, he would have players. And there's still more. But he would have a good core of players that are pretty good overall. So, it would be really hard for a new guy to come in and fail. So, that's just something to think about but anyway he said hope you and your family are good i'm in college now and been a subscriber since 2020 appreciate you man appreciate you he said hope to see you posting even in my late 30s and 40s cheers from india call me ayo hey appreciate you a lot man next question came from my guy rod and he said l boogie is too great to be wasting time with this nonsense defense <laughs> he said remember defense does win championships hint hint uh, blessings clean fam and hashtag blackbird bully ball oh, I, I like that and he said uh, we need to go sign frank clark and xavian howard today frank, frank clark's a free agent i remember when frank clark he's one of them guys man he was with the chiefs and then i think he went to the seahawks i think too then i think he went back to the chiefs something like that. but anyway he used to be one of them guys uh oof, that, that was a little while back with xavian howard um that's another marcus peters uh is he healthy um yeah, hey, like it, it couldn't hurt. Really, at this point, it, it couldn't hurt because he was a ball hawk. Um, he was somebody that he'll get his head turned around for that ball for sure. So honestly, with Xavier Howard, it, it couldn't hurt. Ravens defense. Next question came from my guy Omar. He said, "Hope you are doing well, man. In Jesus' name, we pray, Amen." I've been watching you since the season started, and each game was either a break from a heart attack to having a heart attack. It always seemed to be uh, that are that 
our two guards are not doing as well as they should be, in my opinion. And I've been saying this is our pass rush uh, that is solid. It's our corners. I think we should have traded Brandon Stevens in a first or something for a good corner like Sauce, or we should have gotten past her Tam. We really could have, too. Um, oh, yeah. you Okay, you're going to appreciate the beginning of this video. Well, actually, no. It's probably going to make you frustrated because what you wanted to happen, they tried to do it with Marshawn Lattimore, but obviously it ain't end up happening anyway he said uh, i don't know why i saw uh brandon stevens celebrating when uh he's he didn't do anything good uh he wasn't a high factor for jamal and burrow to uh to do what they did uh and he said hey i uh, hope, hope this makes it to the video oh yeah it is, of course man y'all send a question nine times out of ten really like nine point nine point nine 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 times out of ten it'll be there It'll be there, most likely, unless it just gets super, super crazy and we just can't do it. But we try to make it happen for everybody because y'all deserve it, man. So I, I appreciate y'all. Next question came from my guy, Bilal. I like how y'all switching it up, too. Because, we, like I always say, we get a lot of questions from a lot of the same people, which I got no problem with. I got zero problem with. Keep sending your questions. But recently, it's been a lot of new people sending in questions. So y'all keep doing y'all thing. Don't ever be afraid to send in a question. Don't ever think it's a stupid question. Don't ever be afraid to send in a question. Never. So anyway, continuing, uh, my guy Bilal, he said, hello, Engraven again. Uh, I hope all is still well with you and your family. Everything is good. I appreciate it. He said, I tell you, man, I can see the most high working in your life. Please excuse my email. I need a new phone so everything looks ran together. It, it, it's all good, my friend. He said, I promise not to make this long, but again, man, you never cease to amaze me. And you're by far the most devoted Ravens fan I know. I'm praying for that call to, for you to get that blessing we all been waiting for. And that's for you being the next Ravens reporter. Uh, keep shining like a star. Uh, you... Sir, I appreciate you more, and let's get you to 100K. I'll be really rooting for you, my brother. Hey, I, I appreciate that, man. I do appreciate it. I I, I appreciate it. Um, Ravens, they 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 got plenty of reporters. They they got some real good guys that cover the, this team for us. Um, and they do their thing. They they do their thing. I I enjoy uh the way that we can do it uh, over here. Um, but it it doesn't happen without y'all. And that may sound cheesy, it may sound corny or whatever, but it's true. Nothing that's happening would happen without y'all. Nothing. That's why it means so much the, with the way that y'all be supporting. It means every, seriously everything, man. It really does. Some of y'all might not get it, man. You might not get it, but it, it really makes such a big difference. So I appreciate y'all, man. Um, he said, for my question, I know he is an every down linebacker, but what do you think about the Ravens taking Roquan Smith off the field for some of the obvious passing plays? I wouldn't be mad at it at all. At all. I, I know um, it'd be risky business, but how worse can it get? Because when Roquan's on the field, they go right over his head or go right to his area and make a completion anyway. So if they put Trent Simpson out there or something like that, it's risky business because he's a second-year player. He's not necessarily a rookie, but it's like because he played one game last year where he started one game last year. He played in a bunch of them, but he started one game last year, so he doesn't have all the experience in the world. But what's the worst that could happen? That's not already happening. So, I mean, you ain't even say Trent Simpson yet. But anyway, he said, uh, what do you think about the Ravens taking Roquan off the field for some of the obvious passing plays, specifically critical third downs? He is just not getting it done in coverage. Now, that's on uh, Zach Orr as well. But there, let me continue first. He said, I feel like Simpson should get a shot in those situations, and we should all – Think maybe, uh, think about maybe along with Roe making PQ better last year. It was also the other way around. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I was just talking to my guy um, yesterday, and he was thinking about how Roquan helped Patrick Queen with his run defense, but Patrick Queen helped Roquan Smith look better in pass defense and i was like oh wow mm. and he said uh, again sir thank you for your time and kindness and like our guy lamar jackson in the open field i'm out i like that one but yeah i wouldn't be mad at all if the baltimore ravens did that and look i i, I know again it's risky business roquan smith 100 million dollar linebacker what are you doing taking a 100 million dollar linebacker off the field well they took a uh how much how much did marcus williams get 55 mil Something like that. I forgot how much Marcus Williams got. They benched him. So, 
<laughs> I wouldn't be mad, man. Next question came from my guy Israel. He said, "Good morning, my friend. My question is, when do we blame our defense and not our scheme? We have Kyle Marlowe and probably one or two other players playing good, and everyone else not getting it. Uh, when do we blame our players and not Zach or when our safety is looking around lost, like he lost a wide receiver uh, or his keys?" <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, where, where, where they, yeah, hey, that be happening on Ravens defense. He said, but that, that, that's that's a good point because it's not all been on Zach Orr. Um, I've been somebody that I've been feeling like that Zach Orr is the biggest issue. I still do feel like some stuff Zach Orr does is an issue, um, and it's a big issue. But there've been some players, really, that whole right side of the defense. Um, well, not the whole right side, but Brandon Stevens and Marcus Williams, Roquan Smith too. Those three, the big three, those have been the big three where a lot of the issues have been happening. So that's scary to think about. And he says, Stevens literally getting burnt. Uh, Wiggins and Washington playing under. Chase getting behind them. They both jump up and Chase hops and catches it for a touchdown. That's all players losing, uh, opposing players, two opposing players, which is strange. So when do we blame the people on the field also? No, you're, you're right. You're right. They, they definitely uh, take their fair share of the blame in this whole defensive ordeal as well. And so Marlon Humphrey said it the other day. And we said it actually a couple of times uh, in this past week. He said it's on us. It's on the players. He said, um, and I wouldn't expect him to say anything different. But, yeah, he just brought it to the light. Uh, he said, um, even if the play don't work or bad play call, when do the skills kick in uh, to make a play? We have skilled players that seem skillless. Uh, throw your hands up on your hips when running with wide receivers. Give a little tug, etc. What are we doing? Anyway, hope you and the fam have a blessed week. Stay friendly. Be more caca. And then he said, P.S. Let me get a slide to the left and slide to the right. Oh, yeah, then a little leg. Wow, wow. All that. Oh, he's trying to do the Ray Lewis dance. But um, what you what you said uh, about the, the defenders, they, yeah, again, they deserve a whole lot of the blame, too, because a, a lot has been on them. Because there have been plenty of times, too. When it has been a good play call, they have been in a good position to make a play, and they simply just don't.